Hello and welcome back. Today we are going to set up our first workspace with Databricks. Now, Databricks is available on all of the three major cloud, which is AWS, Azure, and GCP. Now, the setup process for AWS, Azure, and GCP are slightly different from each other. So you have to go ahead and check out the documentation that Databricks provide in order to do the setup on different clouds. We are going to set up Databricks with Azure today. Now, if you want to set up Databricks with AWS, this is the URL you need to visit. This particular page consists of all the information that you need in order to set up Databricks with AWS. Now, if you want to do it with GCP, you need to go to different page, which is docs.gcp.databricks.com, and you can find all of the information for Google Cloud here. Now, before you set up Databricks with any of the cloud partner, you need to keep one thing in mind. There are some charges involved with it. First one is DBU. Now, Databricks builds the services that you use in form of DBU. And DBUs are charged as per the usage of that particular service. So if you are using a particular service, you will only be charged for that particular time you use that service. The next charge that will incur is the cloud resource charge. Now consider if you are spinning clusters, then you have to pay the cloud partner for the charges that are incurred for the cluster spinner. So if you don't have any prior experience of using Databricks with any cloud partner, please wait till we set up and understand the charges involved. Now, in order to set up Databricks with Azure, you need three things. First, a working Azure account. Second, you need a subscription which should be pay as you go. You cannot use free trial for Databricks. Third, you need an user which should have at least contributor access to this particular subscription. So I already have my subscription active and we are going to use this subscription for our setup. Now, Databricks in Azure is a first party service by Azure. This is why the name Azure Databricks. And because of this, Azure Databricks is very well integrated with all the services that Azure offers. And that is why Azure Databricks is one of the most popular service that Azure offers. Databricks offer two plans with Azure Databricks. Now, if you go to Databricks website, you will find the information about both the platform tiers. So the first one is standard and the second one is premium. Now we have an option to try out premium for 14 days. And that is what we are going to set up with our Azure Databricks today. Okay. There's a full comparison between standard and premium tiers that Databricks offer. So you can find all the information of what all services the standard offer and what all premium offer. So some of the services that are not present in standard are present in premium. So you can see this green dots here on the right side and this green dots are missing on the standard side, right? This is why we are going to set up premium in order to get the feel of complete Databricks. Again, if you want to check the pricing, you can go ahead and check out the pricing page from Databricks. It gives you the information about all the DBU costs that would be incurred for the services that you're going to use. Now, along with the charges for the DBU, you will also be charged or billed for the amount of resource that you use at the Azure side. For example, if you spin up one of the cluster with two VMs, you will be charged for both the VM for the time you use it, right? So there will be some cost incurred for this complete training. Now, we will try to minimize this throughout the course. Now, in order to set up Databricks with Azure, you need at least a minimum knowledge of Azure Cloud. Now, if you're not aware about Azure Cloud, I want you to just follow along. So the first thing that we'll do is we'll create a resource group. So I'll just go to resource groups and I'll click on create. Now, the subscription that I'm going to use is pay as you go. Okay. And I'll give the name of my resource group. So that would be ease with data and the name would be ADB. And for resource group, I'll put RG in the end. Okay. And I'll choose the location for India. So I'll just go ahead and I'll type Central India. So this is Asia Pacific, Central India. Okay. Next, I'll create some tag. Now, tags are something that are very useful in order to drill down if you want to see your pricing for the resources, right? So I'll just put one owner tag for every resource that I create for Databricks. Okay. So I'll just put owner and I'll type ease with data, which is the owner for this. So it doesn't matter. It's optional. If you want, you can do it. If not, you, you can just move along. Okay. Next, we'll just go to review and create and we'll just click on create. We'll wait for this to complete. Okay. Now our resource group is ready. Okay. So now we can go ahead and create our resources. Now, in order to work with Databricks, the first thing that we will do is we will create a virtual network. Okay. So I'll just go ahead and search for virtual network. So this is virtual networks. Now I'll click on create. Now, if you see, we'll keep the subscription is same and we'll use the same resource group because we want to club all the resources for this installation in the same group, right? So we'll keep the resource group as ease with data, ADB, RG. Okay. Now, if I scroll down, I need to give the virtual network name. Okay. So I'll just put ADB VNet. Okay. And the location would be same central India. Okay. I'll click on next. Next is the security. I'll leave as is. The next would be to set up IP address. So I'll just click on next. By default, Azure would provide us with some private address space, okay? And these are CIDR notations. So you should know what is CIDR in order to make it work. 
if you don't know it just follow along okay so i'll just change this to 10.0.1.0 okay this would be my cidr i don't need so many addresses right it gives me 65000 i'll only need 200 addresses so i'll just change the cidr to 24 so i'll go back and i'll change it to 24 so when i change it to 24 you can see it only gives me 256 addresses and that is sufficient for me i only need 256 addresses to make this work okay now i don't need the default subnet so i'll delete it and we are going to create two subnets from it the first one would be the public subnet so we'll give the name as public subnet okay now we don't want to give this subnet a complete 255 addresses now we have total 256 addresses right so we'll split them between public and private subnet now to make that change we'll just change the cidr from 24 to 25 so here you can do it so you can just go ahead and select 25 it means it will give you total 128 address okay so the subnet range would be 10.0.1.0 to 10.0.1.127 it's total 128 addresses and this is what we need for public subnet let me just go ahead and click on add now this is done let's add one more subnet which will be our private subnet so to do that i'll just type private subnet okay and i'll change the address space now so it would it should start from 1.128 right because 127 is already taken by the public subnet right and again it is by default 25 so it already gives you the required address range for this particular subnet okay so this is auto selected so you don't need to do anything just change the name to private subnet and click on add now we have both of our subnets ready now you might be thinking why did we create two subnets one public and one private because databricks uses two subnets one for public exposure another is for private exposure so this is why we created two subnets in order to make sure that our private subnet group or the resources which are in our private subnet are not exposed to the public or the internet okay now let's go ahead and click on next now again tag is optional but i'll add one so i'll just add owner which would be is with data and we'll click on next it will run some validation and once this is validated just click on create we'll wait for the deployment to complete awesome our deployment is complete so our vnet is ready right let's go ahead and check it out so i will go to the resource group and we can see the vnet here let's click on it and if i go to settings if i scroll down you can find subnets here if i click on it you can see both the subnets are there you have public subnet and private subnet okay so right now there is no security group attached to it we'll let databricks manage the security group for us okay now if you see here you have only 123 addresses this is because five of the address space from both the subnets are being used by azure for its default services okay so you had total 128 in each of the subnet but you can see 123 this is because five of them are being used by azure services now our vnet setup is ready let's go ahead and set up our azure databricks in order to set up databricks i'll not close this page i'll just duplicate this so i'll click on duplicate now the page is duplicated right because i need those information about public and private subnets so i'll keep it in the duplicated app okay let's go ahead and search for databricks so when i search for databricks you see azure databricks just click on it now let's click on create now again the subscription would remain same for resource group we need to use the same resource group that we created okay we created ease with data adb rg just click on it now we need to give the databricks workspace name so i'll keep it ease with data and adb for azure databricks okay the reason would be same central india now we'll select the tier from here now we know the difference between standard and premium we are going to use trial which is premium for 14 days now will not be charged for the db use means databricks will not charge anything for usage of their services however you will be charged for the services or for the resources that you used at the azure side means if you spin up a cluster you will be charged only for the cluster but not for the services that databricks provide you okay so this does not mean that you are completely free you are only free from the charges that databricks get for their services okay now once we have selected the tier next is to give the managed resource group again this is optional but we will give it so i'll just copy the same name for our resource group and i'll paste it here and i'll just put managed Okay. we'll talk about it later for now you can just add managed in the same resource group so this will be created by databricks okay next we will go to the networking tab so i'll just go to networking so first says no public ip that is yes we don't need public ip and we have our own vnet right we just created so we'll click on yes now next is to select the vnet that we created so we'll just drop down you can find the vnet that we created next is put public subnet name now we already have those informations here so just copy the public subnet name go back paste it here and then the cider information so just go back copy this ipv4 come back and paste it here okay next is the private subnet go back 
copy, paste, and again the cider information. Just go back, copy, paste. Okay, so we have done our VNet configuration. Next is encryption. We'll not change anything here. We'll let it be as default as it is. We'll click on security and compliance. No changes here. Next is tags. Again, I'll put a tag called owner and I'll just write is with data. Okay, and we'll click on review and create. Now you can see the validation is successful. So we can go ahead and create our Azure Databricks workspace. Okay, so we'll just go ahead and click on create. So it will take some time. I'll pause it here. We'll come back when this deployment is successful. Okay, now you can see it says your deployment is complete. It means our Databricks workspace is ready. Okay, let's go to the resource group. And if you see, we can see a service for Azure Databricks here. Just click on it. And now you can see it says launch workspace. Okay, and this is our ADB URL and this is our workspace URL. So you can just go ahead and click on launch workspace. So it will sign you in. Awesome. Now we are inside our first workspace. Okay. Now here you can see something which says free trial ends in 14 days. It means we have 14 days free trial for Azure Databricks. Will not be charged for dollar DBUs, but you will be charged for the resources that you use in Azure. Okay. So that you have to keep in mind. Now this is our workspace. But we also need to check our account, right? For that, you just need to open account.azuredatabricks.net. Okay. You can just go ahead and click enter. And once you do that, you will be inside your account console. Okay, now it will be the same login that you use to set up your Azure Databricks. Okay, you have to use that same user principle in order to log in. Now, if you go to workspaces, you will find the workspace that we created right now. Okay, if you click on it, it gives you the information about the URL and all other information like pricing tier is premium. We still do not have Unity Catalog set up, so it does not show you the Unity Catalog. Okay, but it is the workspace that you created, and here you can manage all the workspace for your account. So we are done with the deployment. Congratulations. We have set up our first Databricks workspace using Azure. Now in our next video, we are going to walk through through the workspace settings and the account console that we have. Till then, keep learning, keep growing, keep sharing.